Hello everybody, in this video I will go through a quick demonstration of how to set up a simple design of experiment study for CFD simulations using hyperemissivity and hyperstudy. Since the main focus of the video will be the DOE setup, a simplistic CFD model of a cylinder is being used. For the inlet boundary condition, we set an average velocity of 10 meters per second, and for the outlet, the static pressure is zero. A material is applied for the fluid with the properties of air, and regarding the defined physics, the simulation is set as incompressible, steady state, and turbulent using the Spaller Dalmaras turbulence model. Two parameters are defined to be used as input for the DOE study. The first is the value of the velocity at the inlet and the second is the viscosity of our fluid. To apply the parameters into the model, we will replace the original values with their names in the corresponding fields. The next step is to define an output variable to be used as the response of the DOE study. In this case, we will assign a surface output to measure the pressure on the inlet face. Now, the setup of the CFD model has been completed in HyperMCFD and we will switch to the Design Exploration tab to open the hyperstat environment. By clicking the DOE study tool, a window will appear where we set the number of processors for every IQ should run. We set the study type to solver since the parameters change the boundary conditions and the properties of the material. And finally, we select the pressure as the monitored quantity of the surface output as we mentioned before. By clicking LANs, we will be transferred to the hyperstudy interface. The first part of setting up the DOE study is to configure actual runs inside hyperstudy and create the corresponding files. Before doing this, we need to make sure that the default numerical precision is small enough to capture the values of viscosity. Now HyperStudy will read the imported Axel model and set the previously defined parameters as input variables. The next step is to run a test model. Initially, the write phase is executed, where the template files of the Axel run are created. Running the test simulation follows in order to extract the result files. The third and last step is to manually declare a value from the surface output.osi file.
The defined surface output includes inlet pressure values for all the simulation time steps as the output frequency was previously set to 1. We will proceed by extracting only the last time step value when the run is converged. Now the parameters of the DOE study will be set. By clicking Next we will select DOE as the study type. From the definition from drop-down list we will choose the previously completed setup. The information for the defined models and defined input variable steps will be automatically completed based on this setup when we click Next again. In this demonstration we are interested in examining specific values of variables corresponding to different simulation conditions. To define these values, we should set the variable modes as discrete. If we, if we are interested in exploring a range of values equally distributed based on an upper and lower bound, we can use the continuous mode. Clicking Run Definition will execute all three steps of the test model. Information for the extract step has already been obtained during the setup procedure when we defined the response from the .osi file. After its completion, we can see all the generated template files for the DOE study. Moving to the Specifications tab, we'll set the DOE type to full factorial using all combinations of available variable levels 4 times 4, 16 in our case. Under the evaluation data, we can see all the generated run combinations. Now, by selecting only the right input files option and clicking on the Evaluate Tasks button to initiate the DOE execution, we can check the extracted solver decks for all the runs. Finally, by checking all three default options and setting the number of parallel jobs to two, we will run the full DOE. After the DOE is completed, the response of each run is written under the corresponding column in the evaluation data table. By scrolling through the folder of each simulation, we can see that the results files are extracted. When specifying parameter combinations for the DOE study manually, the user-defined or run matrix methods can be selected. The user-defined method utilizes a table of integers to represent variable levels, whereas the run matrix method provides exact variable values. An example of applying these methods is the study of different materials, where each material corresponds to specific parameter combinations that define its properties. More information can be found by accessing DOE study's help page section. As we can see in the help page example for the user-defined design approach, a table should be created with its first row including the number of runs and the number of variable levels. Below those, the level combinations are written for the three parameters. We should also highlight that all defined variable levels should be used in the table. Now, let's see a quick example with the already defined variable levels. A file named runtable will be used, which is in CSV format. According to the previously shown example, the first row indicates that the table includes four combinations with two parameters levels, and below these combinations are defined. Now we load the file into HyperStudy, and by clicking Apply and then Evaluate Tasks, the custom DOE study will begin its execution.
Hope you enjoyed this video and thank you very much for your time.